According to the theory of relativity, when you move in space, you do the same in time. Why do you defend the hypothesis that the movement of galaxies would be in time, and not in space? The cosmological view, exposed in the series images of the universe, does not have the official signature of astronomical science. After reading a past bibliography on the topic, I noticed a certain corporatism by the writers, which seems to have come together around a standardized view, in which, one author cites the other. It is as if there is nothing new, going on in that area. It is known that many serious people in science do not agree with the Big Bang Theory, the Doppler Effect, and many other issues. If someone officially disagreed with the current view of cosmology, they might be asked to come up with something better. As there's nothing new to propose to replace the current model, things are accepted as they are being placed. Images of the universe does not claim to be the solution to this impasse. It just tries to launch the freshness of new ideas, which satisfy the logical reasoning of the reader, and not just the mathematician. All the galaxies and stars, that we see illuminating the celestial dome at night, would belong to a static universe in its origin. A timeless universe. That is, they would retain their position in space, without depending on the relative movement that is observed in time. The relativity of the movement of galaxies, for example, would be conditioned by the existence of a time, or an elastic space. If time were to contract, or space would expand, galaxies would move apart and slow down, without abandoning their original position. Time and space, according to the theory of general relativity, are complementary to each other. If time tended to zero, galaxies would tend to be stationary, and would place themselves virtually outside space-time, because, unlike what happens inside, there could be no real movement in the absence of measurable time. Inside space-time, as we know, the movement is continuous and relative. Without time, the future like comet stars would flatten out, on a virtually two-dimensional plane, in which space would reign alone. These events would not be part of our physical reality. It's just that we need to measure time so that things can exist. That is, to interact with the reality around us, we need our memory. This memory, in turn, depends on time. A distant star would only come into existence when its light was spread out next to us. In some cases, the stars would be seen, at present, with the appearance of millions of years ago. There seems to be an inversion in the direction of the arrow of time, in the position of the observer, and in the moment of the scattering of the light of stars. This can be explained by the principle of excluding direct access to what was before that light reached us. That is, the future does not exist because it has not yet happened. In other words, it does not exist because it would not be possible to directly access the interior of the future light cone of events. Time would gradually spread out, since the light was scattered next to us, accompanied by the contraction of space. But, this space would show us the galaxies in the middle of an expansionary phase, in which they would appear moving away from each other, with ever-increasing speeds. This would be more in line with a contraction of time, as the light seems to accelerate towards our event horizon. It is not known whether the gap between galaxies is real or not, because what we see, now, is a frozen image of the distant past. For its part, the acceleration is confused with gravity, after the inversion in the direction of the arrow of time, and the contraction of space gives the appearance of indisputable reality. Despite being the result of a secondary and positive movement of force restoration, where the contraction of the space is expected, the acceleration is incorporated to the previous phase, or to that of its expansion.
as the potential energy, at present, would already be negative or attractive, and would decrease with the reduction of distances between bodies in space-time, it is understood that the acceleration, and the distance between galaxies, would belong to different times in the history of the universe. That is, you would see the expansion, outside of its own time, It would be as if the present phase, of continuous contraction of space, was exposing, with delay, its previous expansionary phase. This problem, it seems, is linked to the existence of an isolated and conscious observer, whose memory would depend on the direct measurability of time, which would be possible only in the phase in which time expands. conclude that the movement, in the observable universe, would be only relative, occurring in time and not in space. There would be no absolute movement between galaxies. When evaluating the expansionary phase, physicists suggest that the space around the galaxies would be stretching, promoting an apparent distance between them. Outside the direct measurability of time, or within their respective future-like cones, galaxies will keep their positions unchanged. Remember the model of an inflating balloon, and what you painted small dots on the rubber. It is said, in this case, that the gap between the galaxies would be apparent, and it would no longer depend on the masses of the stars. Acting out of time, space would be, in theory, generating inertia independently of the masses, and without direct registration. Inertia is opposed to gravity, but it is considered a fictitious force, as it cannot be measured directly. In the case of planetary orbits, it would oppose gravity in such a way that the planets, when driving towards the Sun, could not collide with it. The balance between forces would also prevent the planets from straying forever in the cold of space, abandoning their regular orbits. To communicate the expansion event to the observer, space would depend on its messenger, cosmic radiation. Thus, to the space would not be given any power to directly communicate any events in which it was involved. This is in line with the observation that cosmological events could not be evaluated, by us, in real time, 